Hidden Truth Series. Editor's Note This continues the journey introduced in the Hidden Truth Series, further unfolding the revelations and insights that guide us toward the light of truth, unveiling the hidden truths. The Hidden Truth Series uncovers essential knowledge that has long been concealed from humanity by malevolent forces, seeking control and deception. This deliberate suppression has led many astray, creating a world built on falsehoods and ignorance. A divine gift of clarity. In response, Creator God Aten of Light now offers the Phoenix Journals, a sacred gift of knowledge and illumination. These divine writings illuminate the path to understanding and enlightenment, provided at a critical time to correct the distortions of the past. The Path Forward With the wisdom contained in these journals, there is no longer any excuse for remaining unaware of the laws of God and creation. This knowledge now paves the way for us to return to the truth that leads to true enlightenment, and the light. Hidden Truth Number 10 the Sumerians are the chosen people of Creator God Aten. In Phoenix Journal 50, page 82, Aten says, The Sumerians are the first known and historically recognized civilization. It seemingly appeared suddenly out of nowhere some 6,000 years ago. 4,000 BC, it is credited on your places with virtually all the firsts of a high civilization. The Sumerians built their civilization on the laws of God and creation. Their society was located at the junction of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, in what is now southern Iraq. The Garden of Eden was located there, and the biblical account of Adam and Eve originates in this region. The Sumerians possessed very accurate knowledge of science, mathematics, astronomy, and even space travel. As suddenly as they appeared, they vanished, driven away by aggressive neighbors and in search of a better place to live. Hidden Truth Number 11 The Israelites stole much of the Sumerian history for their own. A biblical record of the history of the Israelites, Jews, is found in the Old Testament of the Bible. In Exodus 3.23, there is an account of a burning bush in the desert that Moses saw, but the bush did not burn up. God spoke to Moses from the burning bush and told him, he would deliver the Israelites from the sufferings of Egypt. This is fake, as it was taken directly from Sumerian history. A second example is the account of the Israelites in the desert needing water. God directed Moses to strike a big rock with his rod, and water instantly flowed from the rock, Numbers 2011. This account was also taken from Sumerian history. A third and very important example, is that of the Israelites, crossing the Red Sea, in their flight from Egypt. They had come into Egypt under false pretense. They claimed they were hungry and homeless. The kind Egyptians took them into their homes and gave them food and shelter. When the Egyptians discovered that the Israelites were only thieves and robbers, stealing them blind, they drove them out of their homes and cities. These evil serpent people were not driven to the Red Sea as they claimed. The parting of the Red Sea is what Creator God Aten did for the Sumerians, as recorded in their true history. Thus, the Israelites took much of the Sumerian history for their own to make them appear to be better people than they really were. Hidden Truth Number 12 The God of the Israelites, Jews, is God Jehovah Satan. Satan has used the Bible for his own purposes. How else to fool the people than to alter their holy book with lies and disinformation? God Jehovah, of the Old Testament, purposely left off his last name, Satan, to mislead the people. God Jehovah Satan told the Israelites to fight their neighbors, kill them, plunder their homes, rape their women, kill everyone, 
even the children, and leave not one alive. Would a kind and loving God do that? Of course not. God Jehovah Satan demanded the Israelites make burnt offerings to him. They were to kill their sheep, goats, and cattle, and burn them on an altar so the aroma of burning flesh would rise up to him as a sweet-smelling fragrance, which please him. What kind and loving God would demand the killing of an animal, and have it burned so he could enjoy the horrible stench of burning flesh? The Israelites obeyed Satan's orders, as many of them had come with Satan, as fallen angels, when he came to our earth from the lighted realms of heaven. These Israelites, or Jews, this term was first coined in 1776, so Jew is not found in the earlier texts, today are called Khazas, Zionists, Bolsheviks, or the Serpent people. They go by other names such as Nazis, Communists, Socialists, Democrats of the U.S. House of Representatives, and Democrats controlling the state government of Virginia. These serpent people have wandered the earth, creating havoc and suffering everywhere. They have been expelled from country after country until, in 1948, they stole the land of Palestine, drove out the people, and called it their country, Israel. Indeed, Israel is their promised land, promised to them by God Jehovah Satan, and they are his chosen people, the serpent people of the great snake, Satan. It is astounding how the people for centuries have believed the lies of the Bible. Is it any wonder that Creator God Aten of Light calls the Holy Bible, Satan's war book? Hidden Truth Number 13 The Jews are Satan's serpent and people. To be a Jew, one believes in the Torah and the Talmud. The Torah is composed of the first five books of the Bible. The Jew believes the altered satanic history recorded there. The Jew also, and most importantly, believes and lives according to the Talmud. The Talmud was written by Satan and some of his religious leaders. The Talmud says that only Jews on planet Earth are human. All non Jews or Gentiles are animals, specifically cattle. That is why non Jews are called Goyim which means cattle. Jews are taught via the Talmud to despise all non-Jews. They are instructed to lie, steal, and cheat the Goyim. They may use the Goyim in any way that benefits them, even to killing them for any reason, for the Goyim are only cattle. Judaism is based upon the Torah and the Talmud, the Bible of the Jews. Christians, who believe the Holy Bible is all truth, are tricked into becoming Zionist Christians. The Zionists are the political Jews, who rule Israel and have gained control of the U.S. and the entire world. Zionist Christians believe Israel is God's promised land, and the Jews are God's chosen people. Therefore, they support Israel and these serpent people every way possible, not realizing they have been tricked by God Jehovah Satan and his loyal serpent people, the Jews. The Jews are Satan's chosen people and live in Satan's promised land, Israel. They have fooled the whole world. Hidden Truth Number 14 Esau, Jesus, Emmanuel and Mary Magdalene were married. By the age of thirty, Esau had returned home from working with his uncle. For the next three years, his mission was to teach the people the laws of God and creation. Upon his return to his home country, Esau married his dear friend, Mary Magdalene. During the next three years, they had a son, Elias, and then a daughter, Sarah. They made their home in Bethany to which Esau would often return with his twelve disciples to rest. Esau's ministry kept him away from home much of the time. His wife, Mary Magdalene, and his mother, Mary, 
followed his work closely and were both present at his fake trial and crucifixion in Jerusalem. Mary Magdalene was stricken with grief at her husband's torture and crucifixion. Fearing for her own life and that of their children, she fled from Jerusalem and took the children to France. Isu did not know where they went, and he never saw or heard from them again. In a past life stream, and bell ringer was Sarah, the daughter of Isu and his wife, Mary. Hidden Truth Number 15 Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel said that Saul was his greatest enemy. Part 1 Saul was from Tarsus, a city in southwestern Turkey. He was a Pharisee, a member of the Jewish sect of self-righteous religious people. He had relocated to Jerusalem and became a Roman soldier under King Herod. Being a Pharisee, Paul had great hatred for the Gentiles, or anyone not a Jew. Esau had gathered twelve disciples around him, common men to whom he was teaching the laws of God and creation, and the many other at Ruth's that ran counter to the political and religious beliefs of the day. Esau's group attracted the attention of many Gentiles, common folk, who desired to hear Esau's teachings. The Pharisees considered Esau a rabble-rouser and leader of a band of protesters that was growing larger, and which threatened both the Pharisees' control over the people and the Roman government's authority. Because of Saul's hatred for Esau's band of outlaws, he was appointed commander over a group of Roman soldiers, tasked with arresting Esau and his followers to eliminate their radical influence in Jerusalem. Hidden Truth Number 16 Esau, Jesus, Emmanuel said that Judas Iscariot was a beloved disciple of his and his most trusted friend. Of the twelve disciples, Judas Iscariot was chosen to be the one to carry their money pouch, and to write and keep the official record of Esau's teaching, and of their travels. It was no easy task to keep an accurate record of all that Esau taught his disciples, and the people on a daily basis. To keep account of the money to provide for the expenses was no easy task in itself. Would Isu have chosen someone to do these tasks if he could not be trusted? Was Isu deceived into thinking Judas Iscariot was an honest person when he was not? No, of course not. This is another example of the biblical record being in error. Judas Iscariot would never betray his friend. He would travel with him and help him until one of them could go no further. Of all the twelve disciples, Judas Iscariot was Esau's most loyal companion. If this be true, then who was it that betrayed Esau in the Garden of Gethsemane with a kiss? Think of living your entire life knowing that everyone thought you were the one who betrayed Esau. This lie has been told by Christians the world over for two thousand years. Hidden Truth Number 17 Esau, Jesus, Emmanuel said that Saul was his greatest enemy. Part 2 Many times, Saul had tried to arrest Esau and his disciples, but the crowds always surrounded him. Twice, Saul had gained access to Esau and challenged him about his teachings, and twice, Esau confronted him with the truth of his evil ways. Saul decided to try a different tactic. He needed proof of what Esau was teaching the people. Then he could use it against Esau in both the Pharisees' court and in the Roman court. There was an influential Pharisee living in Jerusalem called Simeon the Pharisee. Simeon had a son, who could be persuaded to help Saul. His name was Judah I. Herioth, and he could be used to fool the people. So, Saul told Simeon and Judah of his plan, to which they agreed. Saul paid Judah seventy pieces of silver to steal the writings, which Judas Iscariot held in his possession. This Judah did. 
This is why the record shows that Isu took Judas aside and helped him to make a copy of all the information that Judah had stolen. Later, when Saul and his Roman soldiers were planning to capture Isu in the Garden of Gethsemane, Saul paid Judah Iheria thirty pieces of silver to identify Isu. This was necessary for their success. Isu and his disciples wore long robes with hoods, as was the custom. At night, in the darkness of the Garden of Gethsemane, one could not see clearly, and everyone appeared the same. That is why Judah I Heriath betrayed Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel to Saul and his Roman soldiers with a kiss. This is what enemies do, and that is why Saul was Isu's greatest enemy. Later, after Saul's conversion and his name was changed to Paul, he wrote the account of the crucifixion. He deliberately changed the name of Judah for Judas, so that for two thousand years, the world has blamed Esau's best friend, Judas Iscariot, for being the betrayer, when in fact, the true betrayer was Simeon Iheriath, the Pharisee's son, Judah Iheriath. Hidden Truth Number 18 Esau, Jesus, Emmanuel did not die on the cross at his crucifixion. This one truth will shock Christianity to its very core. The entire foundation and belief system of Christianity rests on the lie that Esau died on the cross at his crucifixion, and that he rose from the dead three days later. Supposedly, this was proof that Esau was the divine son of God and had power over death itself. From this lie came the next lie that Esau died to save people from their sins. He died as a ransom. He shed his blood to forgive their sins. So, if you believe this, your sins are forgiven. You are saved. Anything you have done wrong against the laws of God, any evil, is suddenly forgiven. There are no consequences or karma for your actions. You are not held responsible for your wrongdoing. What a fairy tale. And Christians believe this. During his years of working for his uncle, Esau had learned the martial arts. He had developed a strong body. He could slow his heartbeat rate and his breathing when needed to conserve his energy. At Esau's crucifixion, his father, Archangel Gabriel, was present. Gabriel said, I took his pain and I breathed for him. While on the cross, Isu went into a deep comatose state of reduced heartbeat rate and reduced breathing. That is why he appeared dead to the Roman soldiers. He did not respond when they cut his side with a spear. So, at the request of the family and permission of Pilate, Isu was taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, one of Isu's followers, for Pilate had ordered his body to be turned over to Joseph. This tomb had a large public entrance and a small private entrance in the back. The front entrance was closed by a huge rock and guarded by Saul and his Roman soldiers. Thinking that her husband was dead and fearing that Saul and his Roman soldiers were searching for her, it was at this point that Mary Magdalene left Jerusalem and fled with her children to France. Isu did not know where they went, and he never saw or heard from them again. Isu's mother, Mary, family members and friends, and some of Isu's friends from India, who knew the herbal healing arts, quickly entered the tomb by the private entrance. For three days, they nursed Isu back to health, so that by the third day, he could stand and walk. They immediately left the tomb and fled to Damascus, Syria, 136 miles away, to escape from Saul and his Roman soldiers. More hidden truths will be revealed soon, stay tuned. Source, 4winds10.com Editor's Note, to all my listeners and viewers, please check the description section of this video for the source, 
reference links and additional info. From there, you will also have access to the Phoenix journals, which were banned by the U.S. government, along with the initial set of foundational Phoenix journals recommended by Commander Hatton to read, reread, and study first. The journals serve to unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings, and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions, and actions of others from generation to generation, especially those concerning the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda represents an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. In fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mention that he would have a new name upon his return. The Phoenix journals are the word of truth bestowed upon mankind by the higher realms of light, during this most critical time in Earth's evolution, unto a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support this channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.